Take a look at their new Stranger Things collection. I'll put a link for their website down below in the description for this video. Today we got an interesting story. It's about an interview. And the interview was given to Salvatore Toto Orina's fiance at the time. On July 27, 1971, Antoinette de Bagarella arrived at the Palace of Justice at 9 a.m. with her mother and her sister Giovanna. Antoinette de Bagarella, nicknamed Nanetta by her family, was one of six children who grew up in Corleone, the Sicilian hill town just north of Palermo. She had a passion for studying and would eventually work as a substitute teacher in an elementary school. At a very young age, she fell in love with Salvatore Toto Orina. At the time, he was already known to the authorities for cattle theft, extortion, and murder. The reason for her appearance in court, she was accused of passing messages from her fiancé, Toto Orina, to Luciano Leggio. Leggio was considered to be the boss of the Colonnesi at the time. Also in the courthouse that day was the journalist Mario Francesi. Francesi followed Antonetta to the second floor where she tried escaping the onslaught of photographers. At some point, he managed to approach her and get an interview. The following is segments of their interview. She told Francesi, I am nervous, tremendously nervous. Even if I try to remain calm and explain my case to the judges, the flashes of photographers do not give me serenity. I don't like advertising. Mine has been made a national case. As a teacher, I fell in love and engaged to someone like Salvatore Riena. I met him in the 1950s. I was in the sixth grade then, a little girl, and that was the setting of my early childhood. A sad environment which transformed Corleone into a police station. We met Salvatore as children, then in 1963 they arrested him. There had only been sympathy between us. I felt I loved him, but maybe. Am I not a woman? Don't I have the right to fall in love with a man and follow the law of nature? But you will tell me why have I chosen Toto Riina as the man of my life, about whom so many things have been said. I chose him first because I love him, and love doesn't look at many things. Then because I have esteem and trust in him, the same esteem and trust I have in my brother Calogero. Calogero was the second oldest Bagarella son. He was a member of the Colonnesi and would ultimately be killed in the first mafia war. She continued. I love Riena because I consider him innocent. I love him despite the age difference. I'm 27 years old and he's 41. Now I'm here for him. He who has been away from me for two years does not show up either directly or indirectly. I am a woman. This silence makes me doubt his love. I feel lonely and disheartened. Okay, let me interject. Antonetta Bagarella is a native of Corleone. Her entire family was involved with the mafia, her father and her brothers. Their childhood friends included Luciano Leggio, Bernardo Provenzano, and Toto Riina. If you paid attention, she also stated that she loved Riina because she trusted him. So this is not some young, ignorant woman answering the journalist. This is a seasoned woman of the mafia. After her initial statement, she turned to Francesi and asked, Do you want my story? I begin with my official engagement. It took place in July 1969, two years ago, after Salvatore Riina was officially acquitted of the crimes attributed to him and released from prison. In 1969, both Toto Riina and Luciano Ligio were arrested for several murders. They managed to get acquitted by juror and witness intimidation. It was Sicily. What do you expect? Later that same year, Riina went back into hiding after being indicted for murder again. He would remain a fugitive for the next 23 years. Luciano Ligio was a fugitive as well. She continued, My troubles began after on December 16, 1969. I filed an application at the police headquarters to obtain a passport. I had to go to Venezuela to baptize a baby girl my sister gave birth to the previous November. On January 9th, I was issued the passport. The following February 12th, I received the generic invitation for communications concerning you from the Corleone police station. I went quickly to find out what they wanted, and as soon as the inspector saw me, he told me to take my passport out of my purse. I told him I didn't have it with me. He informed me that on February 7th, the commissioner had ordered the withdrawal of the passport. I begged him to arrange another delivery day. I was charged for not delivering the document, and a few days later for slander. I was guilty of having told the truth. From Easter 1970 until April 17th, I was literally guarded in my house. 
By now, they had taken away my teaching. I moved to my father's house in Frata Minori. Frata Minori is in the Campania region, north of Naples. At the time, he needed assistance. He'd been hospitalized in Naples. There, too, I was followed. There were no Carabinieri agents in Frata Minori. They have traffic police follow me. On May 21st, 1970, I asked for and obtained residence in Frata Minori, hoping that in this way, far from Corleone, I could find work and help the family. It was not possible. Every night, at least three times, and at the most impossible hours, agents came to the house under the pretext of watching my father and checking the people who assisted him. I was exhausted, therefore thought it appropriate to return to Colleon, where from the end of July 1970 until January 1971, I was constantly monitored and followed. The only people I met are my mother-in-law and my brother-in-law. Back in June 1970 in Frate Menore, I received a visit from Deputy Commissioner Angelo Mangano. He asked me for news of Luciano Ligio. In exchange, I would have a passport and my family accommodation. Loose promises, but I replied I didn't even know Luciano Leggio by sight. Let's not forget, as I mentioned, Luciano Leggio was a childhood friend of her brother's. She continued, I can tell you with all sincerity from the day of the engagement, that is, for two years, I have never seen Salvatore Ina again, nor have I had any direct or indirect news of him. Subsequently, Mario Francesi posted his article on August 6, 1971, making him an enemy of the Colleonesi. Making matters worse, Francesi went to Toto's home. He attempted to interview his family. His mother and three sisters were not happy. His older sister told Frances, we have our troubles, we do not leave home and have no reason to go to the Begarella home. Either they were truly upset with the interview that she gave, or they were playing the distancing act. They live less than a half mile away from each other. But Ina's sister continued, I repeat, we have no reason to see Miss Begarella. Another sister was the only one to utter support for her sister-in-law. It would be time that they left her in peace for a while. Antonetta Bagarella claimed that both families had grown distrust for one another. In another article dated December 24, 1974, Mario Francesi wrote, Police headquarters were looking to charge Antonetta Bagarella for her secret wedding. Her defense still claimed she was unmarried. Among the evidence, the police possessed a confetti bag with the words Antonetta and Salvatore, married April 16, 1974. Her defense lawyer submitted a certificate of civil status of Colleon, which stated Antonetta Bagarella is still unmarried. I previously did a video on Don Augustino Coppola, the mafia priest. Coppola married Antonetta and Totorin. The wedding took place on April 16, 1974. In this picture, Antonetta is seen with a wedding dress. She was either getting married or going to a Halloween party. The wedding guests included Luciano Ligio and Bernard Provenzano both who came out of hiding for the event. The newly married couple would go on to live in a villa in the Pallavicino district. Antonetta Bagarella was eventually sentenced to four years house arrest. However, an appeal reduced her sentence to 30 months. Not only couldn't she leave the country or her house, she had a 7.30 p.m. curfew and had to report three times a week to the police station. Mario Frances not only interviewed Antoinette Bagarella, but was the only journalist to ever do so. He was also the first person to ever mention Toto Riina's name, as well as the other Colleonesi bosses. Francesi was said to have a sixth sense, like his anticipating the Colleonesi assault on Palermo. Additionally, he managed to get information about a division among the Sicilian Mafia Commission. He had the natural ability to unveil facts. Nevertheless, the Colleonesi sought their revenge on January 26, 1979. Mario Francesi was shot five times and killed in front of his house. The shooter was none other than Antonetta's brother, Leo Luca Bagarella. Mario Francesi was 53 years old at the time of his death. I hope you found this as interesting as I did. If you did, please hit the like button. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you could do so as well. Okay, ciao for now. You can subscribe to the Sit Down News blog at sitdownnews.com, and I appreciate everyone who has subscribed. Thank you. Well, just another example in the mob you never knew about. Hope you enjoyed the story. If you would like to subscribe to this channel, you could do so down below. If you would like to subscribe to my other channel, Unlimited Substance Podcast, I'll add a link in the description to this video.